Hey y'all, what's up? Heather Moss here. And today we're back in the kitchen talking about potato salad. Memorial Day is coming up pretty soon and one of the things I like to have when I'm having a cookout for like say Memorial Day is potato salad. Now I particularly am not the biggest fan of a mayonnaise and a mayonnaise based potato salad. I prefer mine to be vinegar oil and mustard based. So I wanted to show you guys how I do that quickly today. So the first thing that I did was I took four russet potatoes, peeled them and chopped them into large cubes, like a large dice. Um, and I have those boiling back here on my stove. A couple things with potatoes, especially when I'm making potato salad, I don't like the chunks to be very small because as you start to mix them up, they start to break apart and I kind of fight with the idea of it being like a dressed up mashed potato, like I'm not about that. So I cut my chunks a little bit larger when I'm making potato salad. This recipe, you might need to adjust some of the ingredients and also the amounts of ingredients for how many people you're making it for today. I'm just making it for dinner. I'm gonna have a nice southern dinner, um, some fried pork chops, and potato salad would go really well with that. So those are working back on the stove. I also took half a packet of bacon. I particularly like thick sliced bacon. I don't like the thin slices. I, don't, I just kind of feel like they're a lot to deal with and also like, a thick cut piece of bacon, like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Bacon, y'all. Y'all, bacon, bacon, it's like it's on food group. It's great. And like a lot of things. So, half a packet of bacon that I chopped up. I chop it before I cook it. I know a lot of people cook it and then crumble it and it just seems like a whole lot of, no. Chop that thing up, freezer it for a few minutes so it's harder, chop it, pan medium high heat because you want it to be crispy like this but you don't want it to be burned. You also want to save the grease from your bacon because we're going to use that in the dressing for our potato salad. So half a packet of bacon. So while my potatoes are back here working I'm going to start chopping up some of my other ingredients. I like to put some fresh tomatoes. This salad is going to be very colorful, very summer, delicious flavors that are right in your face. So I like to get cherry tomatoes. Sometimes I like to get the colorful ones. These are like huge. They say they're organic, but I feel like there's GMO all over this. Like this is like we ran out of cherry tomatoes, so we got aroma tomato plant, just didn't wait till they were big enough, I don't know. So usually I would cut them in half. I'm gonna cut them in fourths today because they're like the size of a small cruise ship, so. The next ingredient is onion of some sort is what I'm gonna say about this. Um, you can use a green onion, you can use shallots, you can use chives, but you need some kind of onion situation going on. Let's be real. Onion is one of those flavors that is just phenomenal. I'm using a red onion because that happens to be what I have. Um, but green onion does really well in here and the color's really great. So, I'm just gonna do really thin slices of this because anytime you've got a lot of onion, that can get overpowering really quickly and you don't want that. So we're actually gonna dice this up pretty small. I'm gonna do thin slices and then I'm gonna dice that up so that it doesn't become an onion salad, if you know what I'm saying. You've, we've all done this, right? You've all gotten like an onion out and you put it in your food and then you're like, I mean, I could have just bit into the onion because it's all this tastes like, it's just straight onion. like. Ain't nobody need no onion fist in their life. You know what I'm saying? I mean, just saying. So that's probably maybe a couple more slices. And you just kind of have to eyeball this. That was a pint of tomatoes. Yep, pint of cherry tomatoes, four potatoes, half a thing of bacon, and this is what, a little less than a quarter of a large red onion. Throw that guy back in the bag. We can eat him later. I'm just gonna give him a little extra choppy poos. So funny story, in my work life, I have a somewhat professional job and I've been using, I've been e-poosing all my words with the kids. So like nappy poos, milky poos, outside e poos, everything is e-poos. Anyhow, so there I was 
on the work conference call and I was like let me get on my emaily poos emaily poos so we've got these ingredients and look how good that's starting to look like can you see that like the tomatoes and the onions and we're gonna put some potatoes on there so let's start working on the dressing -y part while our potatoes are finishing cooking so salt I was making a potato salad recipe the other day and it turned out okay but they salted the water on the potatoes and I never saw the water on my potatoes and I'll tell you why when I'm making potatoes there's no telling if I'm gonna get called over to take care of something or whatever I can't I can't risk my potatoes sitting in uber salty water for a long period of time because the, the fact of the matter is if you're making it with something else you could end up needing to like spend your time on that something else or you know the kids could be tearing the house down and then your potatoes end up sitting in that salt water for like a lifetime and they taste like you just drank ocean so no don't do that so you technically you probably should salt your water but I don't I feel like I can salt the actual potatoes perfectly fine and I have control over that and it's not time sensitive so I like a lot of salt I'm gonna come in here with probably at least a teaspoonful of salt we need some pepper because pepper couple cracks of black pepper I tend to go a little easier on the pepper because it makes it a little too spicy for the kiddos if you don't you've already got onions in here let's, let's not get crazy you know what I'm saying let's not get crazy on it so I'm gonna go on top of here with some mustard you can make this as like a separate dressing and then mix it all together and whatever but um, it just seems like an extra plate and I got time for more dishes so I'm just gonna come over this with I don't know maybe two tablespoons of mustard I mean that looks pretty good right I mean I wouldn't eat that it looks like a hot dog topping but whatever this is red wine vinegar I love red wine vinegar I love vinegar in general um, but mustard is already kind of tart so if you are not a big fan of tart if you can't eat like a whole lemon by yourself don't get crazy on this but I'm gonna say like maybe a tablespoon of two of red wine vinegar one thing you want to keep in mind is that you're gonna pour hot ingredients on here and those t potatoes are gonna suck up flavor potatoes themselves are super bland but then when you add flavor to them it sucks it up like a sponge so you want to be careful when you add it in in the beginning and you taste it and you're like oh that needs more salt let it sit for a while before you do that because it'll be saltier later so a couple tablespoons of olive oil again like potato salad is usually wet from the fat in the mayonnaise so we're gonna go in with two different types of fat we're gonna go olive oil and then I'm gonna go a couple tablespoons of bacon grease as well Bacon, y'all bacon is life so Let's get a spoon and mix this part up. So we're gonna give that a good mix of mixy poos. You know what I'm saying? And of course, that's much wetter than you'll need it to, than you would want just these ingredients to be. Because, you know, you're about to add a whole ton of potatoes in here. We got that all mixy pooed up. See what I mean by the e-poos? Everything's e-poos. I'm gonna go check on my potatoes. Baby life. So let me show you what you're looking for on your potatoes. So obviously this is hot as all get out. Like all I can think right now is that we need to set the camera up over here, put it in slow-mo and watch the steam come off this, but obviously it's hot. So your potatoes, you want to be able to do this with them. See how that works? There's still a hard spot right there. See how there's resistance? Like there shouldn't be any resistance. Like see, no resistance. Like, you know what I'm saying? This has a little bit of resistance. So let's give that a, a couple more minutes. 
So I tested my potatoes again and now they're perfectly fork tender. And so I've drained them and then I have another little trick that I like to do with potatoes. There's two things that make potatoes bad in my opinion. One is if they are undercooked. Two, if they are waterlogged. A waterlogged potato is just gross. And I do this with mashed potatoes as well. So after I drain my potatoes, I put them back in the pan that I cooked them in. And then I just sit them on the eye that it was on turned off so that it has a chance to evaporate out any excess water. It usually takes about 30 seconds, so they should be done now. Let's go grab our potatoes. See how there's like no water in there? How it's like dried out? That's gonna make a better potato, okay? So we're gonna pour those in here. They're hot. The reason you do it while they're still hot is they will soak up more flavor if they're still hot when you put them in your sauce. So now we just need to mix this guy up. And this is where, you know, you kind of mix it, taste it, and go back in if you need to. Because you can start to kind of taste, just remembering that it is going to get saltier and more vinegary as it sits, because it will soak up those flavors. Just gonna give him a good mix around. See how as you mix it, the potatoes start to fall apart? That's why I like bigger chunks, because if you make smaller chunks, that'll just turn into mush. And ain't nobody about that life. I ain't got time for mushy potatoes. I mean, you want them to be fork tender, but you don't want them to be mushy. Now, tell me that's not more beautiful than like a mayonnaise potato salad, I'm just saying, just, you know. To each his own, but it looks delicious. So, let me show you how I plate this up, because I'm gonna leave it just like this, and then I'm gonna let it come to room temperature, and then I'm gonna put it in the fridge. You can serve this hot, room temperature, or cold. I don't like it to be super cold, so like usually like 30 to 45 minutes before I'm gonna serve it, I'll go ahead and sit it back out and making it earlier in the day. So it's obviously gonna be a little cooler than it would be if I was doing hot. So I've got my potato salad up and I've got some fresh parsley that I grew in my air gardens, which are like this hydroponic system that I have in my dining room. So we go parsley. Parsley to me does wonders for things. It adds a level of freshness. It's just wonderful. Anytime that you've got like bacon, parsley just offsets it super nice. And then you go in with your crispy bacon from before so that your bacon stays crisp. If you put this bacon in right now, mix it up, put it in the fridge, bacon ain't gonna be crispy no more. Nobody likes some soggy bacon, am I right? So this is what it looks like. And let's go in for a taste. Mm. That was so good. I should probably take like really small bites and I ain't about that life. The bacon and the parsley just offsetting each other. The mustard and the vinegar and the bacon grease. Delicious. So that's gonna be it for me. That is how I make potato salad without the mayonnaise. I hope you guys try this. Y'all, if you do try it, comment below. Tell me what you think about it. Let me know too if you think like, if it would be helpful if I had like a website with these recipes kind of published on there so that you can kind of see what it is. Thanks again, you guys, for watching. Spend your time with me today. Like, subscribe, hit the bell, and I'll see you in the next video. I can't reach it. Okay.